In this video, you will learn about the most commonly used sewing tools. If you have the optional downloadable curriculum for this series, you can print out the sewing tools study guide and fill in the tool names as you watch this video. The curriculum can be purchased and downloaded online. For a link to the Calico Jam shop, please see the video description. These are a special type of scissors called shears and are different from regular household scissors because they are designed for cutting fabric and thread. Their bent shape allows the bottom of the blades to lay close to a flat surface while cutting fabric. The blades of household paper scissors have a more symmetrical shape and sit at an angle to a flat surface. To keep your shears in good working condition, only use them for cutting fabric and thread. Never cut paper or other materials with your shears. You can see that my household scissors cut paper very well, but do not cut fabric. While the shears will easily cut the fabric. Label the shears on your study guide. This tool is a seam gauge. It is a small ruler with a slider that can be positioned to mark a desired measurement. This is useful for measuring an amount of fabric to fold under, checking the width of your seam allowances, measuring buttonholes, and many other purposes. Label the seam gauge on your study guide. The tape measure is a flexible ruler that is useful to measure things that are not flat, such as body measurements that are used to determine required pattern sizes. Label the tape measure on your study guide. A fabric marking pen or pencil is used to transfer important pattern information to your fabric, such as fold lines for hems and elastic casings, darts, buttonholes, and button placement. Many are designed to wash out of the fabric, like this special fabric marker. Label the fabric marker on your study guide. Thread is used for hand or machine sewing and comes in different colors, fibers, and thicknesses. Label the thread on your study guide. Pins are used to keep fabric layers aligned while sewing and to secure pattern pieces to fabric. They are also used to hold fabric in place while ironing. In that case, I use all metal pins so the heat from the iron does not melt the heads. Label the pins on your study guide. A pin cushion is used as a way of storing your pins so they are easy to pick up, put back, and keep track of. I find it easier to pull a pin out of a pin cushion than dig one out of a box. They come in different sizes and shapes, and making your own can be a fun sewing project. Label the pin cushion on your study guide. Needles have a hole at one end for thread to pass through. This is called the eye of the needle. Needles are threaded and used for sewing stitches by hand or with a machine. This is a machine sewing needle. It has an eye near the tip and a wider top with one flat side to properly fit into a sewing machine. They come in different types depending on the material you are sewing. You can see the different thicknesses of these needles. This is a heavy needle used for sewing leather, while this lighter one is used for sewing thinner fabrics. Label the machine needle on your study guide. Hand sewing needles have an eye near the top and are smooth and narrow 
so they can be pulled all the way through the fabric by hand. They also come in many different sizes and even shapes, depending on what you are sewing. These special hand sewing needles are used for sewing upholstery, bags, tents, carpet, and other heavy work. Label the hand needle on your study guide. A thimble is sometimes used to protect your finger when pushing a needle through the material. This is especially useful when sewing through thick layers of fabric. Label the thimble on your study guide. A seam ripper is used to remove stitches that were made incorrectly or were intended to be temporary. The seam ripper has a pointy tip and a U-shaped cutting blade. To remove stitches, gently slide the sharp tip under one stitch and cut the stitch with the U-shaped cutting blade. You can continue along cutting each stitch in this same way, or you can pull the next stitches through by avoiding the cutting blade area of your seam ripper. It may save time to continue pulling the stitches through until you have a tail of thread long enough to hold on to. Then skip ahead four or five stitches and cut another stitch. You can then use the thread tail to pull out the stitches in between and repeat the process until all of your stitches are out. Another method of using the seam ripper once you get started is to gently pull the two layers of fabric apart so you can see the stitches from the inside. You can cut the stitches here with the U-shaped blade and then gently pull the fabric apart more and cut again. Repeat this process until all of the stitches are out. Label the seam ripper on your study guide. There are more sewing tools out there, but these are the ones that I use most often. If you will be taking the sewing tools quiz, use the study guide you just filled out to prepare and rewatch this video as needed.